Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. Today I wanted to talk about my ARP Omni Master Oscillator Replacement Module, this thing here. I pointed it out in a video a while back and I've had a few questions about what it is and why it's special. So today I hope to answer those questions and show you how to install it in an ARP Omni or an ARP Quadra. And everything I talk about in this video uh, applies to the ARP Omni 1, the ARP Omni 2, and the ARP Quadra. So even though I say Omni, know that I mean uh, Omni 1, Omni 2, or Quadra interchangeably. And after I explain the master oscillator and show you that, um, I'll show you a few other retrofits that I've created for these synthesizers as well. First question is, what's a master oscillator? Before we can answer that, we need to understand how a polyphonic synthesizer works. So the ARP Omni and the strings and polysynth section of the ARP Quadra are polyphonic. But that type of polyphony is different than, say, your Provid 5 or your Oberheim OBX or your Memory Moog. On those styles of synthesizers, you have a fixed number of voices. So five on the Provid 5, eight on the OBX, six on the Memory Moog. Uh, and each voice has its own dedicated set of circuitry, each with its own oscillators, its own filter, and its own VCA. So while you're limited to a fixed but definitely usable number of notes or voices you can play at any given time polyphonically, you have a lot more expressive control over those voices. So the Omni has unlimited polyphony. If your forearm is big enough, you can mash all 49 keys on the keyboard and all those notes will work and they'll make sound. But your control over the voice is pretty limited. Uh, you have very limited controls like the hollow waveform or waveform enhancement button. You have a VCF to run the synthesizer voices through. And you have separate VCAs for the strings and synthesizer voices. That those notes share a VCF and a VCA makes the Omni paraphonic, but that's a discussion for another YouTube channel. Uh, but from the standpoint of the oscillator, you really have one oscillator that's making, that's responsible for all the notes on your keyboard and you have very limited control. Basically you can shape that into two shapes, a sawtooth or a kind of sawtooth square wave hybrid and that's it. Now we're getting to the master oscillator. The way the Omni achieves polyphony is by having a fast, inaudibly high frequency master oscillator that spits out a square wave. The master oscillator square wave is fed into a specialized and obsolete chip called a top octave generator. This top octave generator divides the master oscillator's frequency by specific numbers to generate a square wave with approximately the frequency of each note in the top octave of the keyboard. So fast master oscillator square wave comes in and 13 slower square waves come out corresponding to each note from C3 to C4 on the keyboard. Each of those square waveforms coming out of the top octave generator is then divided down to make all the remaining lower notes of the keyboard. For example, the D3 from the top octave generator goes to a chip which divides the frequency by 2, 4, and 8 to make D2, D1, and D0 respectively. So you can see that while you're playing a bunch of notes, they're all being driven by just one oscillator, the master oscillator. Any mistuning or drift on the master oscillator will ripple down through the top octave generator and the frequency dividers and affect every note played on the keyboard. The Omni's master oscillator is a tank circuit centered around a really obscure and obsolete tuning coil, which is a variable inductor. This oscillator design dates back to the coal pits oscillator, which was designed in the 1910s, literally over a hundred years ago. So what? I mean, it's a time-tested design and it works, so why mess with it? And I've got a few answers to this. First comes from my experience working on many of these synthesizers. The master oscillator circuit is a common failure point, disproportionate to many other areas in the synthesizer. I commonly find one or two of the resistors in the master oscillator burn due to excess current. Sometimes I even see stuff like this, where clever but misguided people try to solve the problem of a burning resistor by increasing the wattage of the resistor instead of fixing the real problem. This isn't an area of the synthesizer that you want excess current in because it's right ahead of the rare and obsolete top octave generator chip that I previously mentioned. And that chip is the most expensive single part in one of these synthesizers. Another good reason to mess with it would be out of necessity. The tuning coil or the variable inductor is obsolete and relatively fragile. Like in the case of the Omni I'm working on here, this coil got smashed when the previous owner was storing it. 
But it's not just the tuning coil that's scarce. We've got an obsolete 2N5910 transistor in the TO106 package. We've got obsolete germanium diodes and some costly silver mica capacitors. And another reason would be to improve the precision and stability of tuning. As I showed before, all the notes on the whole synth are driven by the master oscillator. So if the master oscillator drifts out of tune, so does the whole synth. So common failure point, protecting rare chips, replacement for obsolete parts, and improved precision and stability. So for these reasons, I made a drop-in replacement master oscillator. It replaces the tuning coil and all of these parts. It's a simple circuit using a crystal oscillator. It's highly precise and temperature stable, and it's easy to install. So to put it in, we're gonna pop this board out, and we're simply gonna cut off or desolder the parts that are no longer needed. I've removed the broken tuning coil on this one, but if yours is working, you can just leave it in place in case you or a subsequent owner wants to undo this modification. Then we simply take my module and drop it in where the old CMOS 4007 chip was and then solder it into place. And that's all there is to it. Of course, don't worry about down here. I'll still take care of these capacitors before I finish up the synthesizer. But for now, we're just talking about the master oscillator here. So there are a couple of questions and concerns I thought of and were asked of me by people I've already shared this module with. The first is, doesn't this make it a digital synthesizer? And we're into the realm of opinion now, but my opinion is that it doesn't. Uh, it's no more digital now than it was with the original design. In the original design, the master oscillator was squared up by the digital 4007 CMOS chip and then divided down by the digital top octave generator chip and further divided down by digital frequency dividers. So the question then is more like, was the ARP Omni and Quadra originally a digital synthesizer? And again, my opinion is no. We're just talking about using some CMOS digital logic chips to square up waveforms and do some basic frequency division. If this makes a digital synthesizer, then practically every analog synth you know is really a digital synthesizer. Most analog synthesizers have digital CMOS chips inside of them. Many of them have CPU chips with firmware and digital to analog converters, but they're still analog synthesizers. On the Quadra and the Omni, even with this mod, the wave shape, envelopes, filter, VCA, and all that good stuff is still analog. Another drawback I considered was that you lose the ability to detune the synth with this approach. And it's true, with the old approach, if you wanted to, you could slightly detune the synth by adjusting the tuning coil with a screwdriver. But this adjustment was more of a stage calibration than a performance control. Like on this Omni 1, access to the tuning coil, which was sitting here, is through a tiny hole in the bottom of the synth case, which then you'd have to adjust with a very tiny flathead screwdriver. On this Quadra, access to the tuning coil is this little tiny slotted shaft that barely pokes through the rear panel. I've never seen anyone modify these to add a knob, and I don't know of anyone that uses it as a performance control. So yes, you can't detune it anymore, but you wouldn't have anyway, so no great loss there. In the last video, I said I had three retrofits for these synthesizers to share with you this month, but it's actually four. I'm not sure the other two would make for very interesting videos, so I'll just share them with you now. I've got a replacement for the TDA0470 and TDA0470D chips, which are used for gating the polyphonic notes on the Omni, Quadra, and Selena string ensemble. I call it the TDA0470SC. Uh, so if you've got one of these synthesizers in a range of about 8 to 10 keys in a row is out, it's probably one of these gating IC chips. So my retrofit is a drop-in replacement, and it uses modern, less noisy transistors, and I'd include clamping diodes to reduce crosstalk that were only found in the later revisions of the original chips. I created these because these chips are obsolete 
and I'm always skeptical about the authenticity of new old stock chips on eBay. So this way my parts are new and I know that they'll work. And the final retrofit I've got is a replacement 4075 filter. Uh, this particular Omni was missing its filter, so repairing it isn't an option in this case. But I've already got a line of replacement filter submodules for most of the other ARPs. I've got the 4023 from the Odyssey Mark I, 4034 from the Pro Soloist, Pro DGX, and Explorer, 4035 from the Odyssey Mark II, and now this 4075, which was used in the Omni, Omni II, Quadra, Avatar, and later Odysseys and Pro DGXs. And in a week or two, I'm going to also have the 4012 ladder filter for the ARP 2600. Like the other filters that I produce, the design is the same as the original, but the quality of the parts has been improved. The original 4075 filter uses a number of hand-matched transistors, thermally coupled by holding them together with a little copper band. In my version, I'm using monolithic matched pair transistors that are on the same silicon die. So not only will the matching be better than trying to hand match the transistors, but the transistor pairs will be more ideally thermally coupled. Yes, it's surface mount, which may be less serviceable than through hole. But my modules are backed by something unheard of in this industry, a guarantee. Plus, even though the original filters were through hole, they weren't very serviceable to many people. The traces were thin and very easily damaged. I see things like this all too often. Original filters hacked to death by poor soldering. One cool thing about my modules, uh, they do accept pins and fit the exact footprint of the original submodule, but they also have this little header here, so they can be used for DIY stuff and other things. So maybe we'll have some Synth Chaser Eurorack modules someday soon. Anyway, there we go. A drop-in replacement for the master oscillator in the ARP Omni 1, Omni 2, and Quadra that replaces the obsolete tuning coil from a hundred-year-old design. Replacements for the obsolete gating IC chips and a replacement 4075 voltage-controlled filter. I hope this helps a few of you out there fix up your synthesizers. You can get all this stuff on my website, synthchaser.com. I've also got a few of the original tuning coils for sale as well for you purists out there. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.